Hey traders, welcome back. So a series of videos where we talk about strategies and setups from other traders that are freely available on the internet. We look at them, we analyze them, we assess them. We see if they're any good or if we see if they're a foundation that we can use to build on or we want to discard them and not look at them. Now, I've been looking at Linda Bradford Rashke's trades and if you go and check out the previous videos, there's a lot of swing trading setups and strategies. This is one strictly for the day traders out there. Okay, now she's named this, not me. It's called the short skirt trade and I'm sure I've had an interview where uh, the reason why she called it that, go and check it out, look on Google and you can see for yourself. Anyway, the point is this is a very active scalping setup. And you know what? It's actually one that I've been using so often I didn't realize that it was something she used. I've looked at all her stuff before um, and I, but I wasn't aware of this one. But it's, you know, all of these setups, guys, they're not new, fresh things. They're all based on solid market approaches, solid market strategy and patterns. Now, the idea of this is I don't have the actual strict rules for it. But as far as I'm aware, and the way that I trade it, and I don't call it a short skirt, I call it a first pullback, but it's an explosion in volatility, let's say to the upside for now, it's a pullback to somewhere and then a continuation, right? Um, I know that the way that Linda approaches it is she buys on the pullback and then she scales out as it approaches the high. So let's look at it like that. Um, I've talked about my setup before in previous other videos. Go and check it out. Um, I call it a first pullback trade. My criteria are a little different, a little different. But let's look at this exact one. So I know that Linda uses Keltner channels a lot. So I've got some ready and teed up here. The settings on these. Now, if you're not familiar with Keltners, I did a, a video earlier, um, a while ago. Um, talking about the difference between Keltners and Bollinger Bands. Pretty similar guys, except that the um, Keltners are based on average true range as opposed to standard deviation like Bollinger Bands. So remember we're in a very, very short time frame here. We're in a one minute. I've just got a DAX up. I'm gonna stick a, da a, a DAO up in a moment. Now the idea is um, she uses a 20 period moving average as the pullback point. So the theory is you get an explosion out of the Keltner channels. So um, whatever setting you've got those on, I guess the higher the setting, the less frequently you're going to get a setup, but um, the more likely it's going to work for you. So it's probably swings and roundabouts in terms of profit ratio. So the explosion out of the Keltners pulls back to a 20 period moving average. You buy on the first touch of the 20 period moving average, and then you scale out as you push through the high. In fact, let's move to a, a, a candle, uh, sorry, a bar chart, because that's really all we're looking for is that kind of tight, high tight flag. And listen, as I mentioned before, guys, bull flags and bear flags, little tight flags anywhere after momentum are always a good play in my book. You know, they've been my bread and butter for a long time. And I love to trade these kind of things because it indicates a break in momentum and then the pause and then you're looking for the continuation. Um, let's not go back into my set. Let's look at her strategy. She likes to quantify it. And this is something that she's very good at um, in terms of what indicates momentum. For her, it is a breakout of a Keltner. Um, so that makes perfect sense to me. I, I would eyeball it, but if she's got a strategy, it says, listen, if it breaks out the Keltner, we're expanding in volatility, hence we want to get involved. You get a high type flag, you look to get involved. So you're probably looking at going long here. Whether that counts or not after it's done a couple of moves, I'm not sure, but that's the theory of it. This is probably, again, uh, more textbook in her eyes. The explosion out of the Keltner, the type flag that we get here, the pull back to the moving average, and then you're looking for literally a short scalp up there. Now, one thing she did mention is she uses a three-point stop in the S&P 500, which is about a 30-point stop in the in the Dow. That's too much for these current for current market conditions. When it's really volatile, fine. I think you have to dial that and tighten up a little bit um, and base it. You know, if the momentum's still there, it's not going to pull back 30 ticks on you. Let's actually have a look at the uh, at the Dow, and we'll see exactly. You know, kind of the moves we're getting. Um, if we can find one of these little opportunities, maybe we can. Okay, it looks like there was one here. Not extreme, but nevertheless, it's probably right. I, you can see on the scale here, guys, on the on the on the right hand side, that this is not the kind of thing you want. But let's look at it objectively here. Um, really, you want a much broader move than this. But we've broken out the Keltners. You have the little flag. It tags a 20 period moving average, and you're looking to move to the downside and take it off there. Um, I wouldn't be taking this because one of the rules I know she definitely has is on a quiet day, a Z day as she calls it, or Z day the Americans call it, which in other words means an oscillatory normally after a significant trend. 
do not take this trade because it's purely based on momentum. You want to capture it on trend days. And something she mentioned that I do recall from one of her interviews is that you know when you've got a really brutal move one way or another, you would get several of these in a row. So you get high tight flags holding at highs. You buy on the pullback, expand out the Keltner, pull back to the 20 period, expand out the Keltner, and you'd literally be scalping that move you know, from the low of the pullback of on the 20 period up to the high, taking it out, next one high. And I, I know I know for a fact, similar thing, obviously not this short skirt exact strategy, works well in bear markets when things are really getting hammered. You know, you often get drives lower, aggressive drives lower, attempted pullbacks that just fail um, or consolidate. And then if you can, if you can time those, and it makes sense to be using something like a 20 period moving average, it makes sense to use something like a Keltner to, to to detect that expansion of volatility add those two together you've got a nice powerful strategy personally i think i would add um a trailer to say don't necessarily take me out on the test of the previous days a previous low or high because i think that you're missing out on a potential bigger move but let's look at it objectively and look at the rules that are set out that looks fine and uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about any additions or deductions from these or amendments should i say from this strategy to make it more powerful for the type of stuff that you trade but i like it it's a good momentum play it's got the good structure behind it stops a bit wide stop needs adjusting um but i like the addition of the keltners i like the 20 period exponential moving average a one minute may be a bit too active for most of us out there but it's something to look at maybe we can extrapolate that out onto a daily or 15 or whatever your preferred time frame is if you like this video guys please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos from me and other traders on this channel. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the strategies that I find out there on the internet and books and stuff. And we'll dig down into them. And hopefully we can find ones that you're going to use in your trading to make you a better trader. That is what it's all about. Anyway guys, take care and I shall be back with another video soon. Bye bye.